on 60 minutes uh, let's uh, just absolutely fantastic you're flying over there at the moment i saw your your stories from uh, america last night on nine news tell me where exactly are you at the moment we're watching it there's a lot of traffic behind you where are you and what's going on with donald trump Thanks, Eddie. Um, I'm at the Walter Reed Medical Centre. So this is in Maryland, uh, just outside of Washington, D.C. And uh, inside uh, the gates of that hospital is where the President of the United States is right now receiving treatment uh, for his illness, for coronavirus. Uh, And also parked outside the hospital is this massive festival of Trump fans. They have been here for three days. And each day we come back, the crowds are getting bigger. They've got these massive Trump flags. They are chanting all day and they keep chanting four more years uh, and all the cars are tooting their horns also all day. So there is a lot of uh, action and sound going on here, Eddie. Hey, Lexi, so many parts to this story we're just talking about. What's getting the most traction? Because there's so much uh, difference in the reporting around his actual health from report that started him asking his closest medical confidence, is he going to die, to that he's fine, he'll be out of hospital tomorrow, and then the treatment, taking some of these experimental drugs. What, what's resonating the most in America at the moment? I think you pretty much just nailed it, the fact that there are so many different messages coming out from uh, officials about his health condition as we speak. Um, there's been some frustration uh, about different bits of information. So today his physician says he's recovering really well. He's on day two of this antiviral drug. Uh, He's doing a five-day course of that. And they've put him on a steroid uh, because of a couple of oxygen level drops. Uh, So that's what the physicians are saying. They're also saying he could potentially be out uh, as early as tomorrow. Conversely, his chief, the president's chief of staff yesterday uh, painted a different picture of the situation, sort of said that the next 48 hours would be really critical. Uh, So the officials are getting a lot of heat about that. It's a tricky one because equally it's a matter of interpretation as well. You know, the way one physician might describe someone's state could be different to another's um, and things can be interpreted differently. Uh, But certainly there is a lot of pressure, I think, on the president's position, which we saw just again in his press conference today, to uh, be completely transparent. And and he found himself today having to clarify points he made yesterday about the president uh, being on oxygen uh, a few days ago. So it is a really difficult one. Uh, but, I mean, they, that's what they said. They said he's recovering really well and he could be out tomorrow. Um, so we'll have to wait and see if indeed that happens. So, Alexi, we're into the home stretch now. It's, uh, today it's Monday, October 5 in Australia. Um, we're a month away, basically, from the, the elections. It's basically four weeks now till the election. Um, what, what happens now with all the debates? Has that just been thrown out the door? Has everything just been totally disrupted? Is this going to be now a virtual election from here on in if he has to be isolated? Look, I think if the candidates have got anything to do with it, hopefully not. Uh, in the short term, uh, Vice President Mike Pence is standing in for the president at a rally this week in Arizona. Uh, Kamala Harris and Biden are also going to be in Arizona this week. And as far as I know, with the vice presidential debate, uh, they are going ahead in person, but they're going to be spaced out uh, a little bit more, a little bit further apart than initially planned. And it also, there's no word on the next debate being postponed or cancelled or going virtual or anything as yet. But surely they're having to start to consider how they will do this next debate, because that's um, that's not very far away at all. It's October 15. Um, but you're, it does raise a really interesting question about how this election is all going to work if he doesn't, if his state doesn't improve. I think what's the, bi- the biggest problem for the president right now is that he is now on borrow. Like, he, he, this is time he needs to make up. He's stuck inside a hospital while Joe Biden is out ramping his campaign up. Um, and, and this would just be torture for the president. He prides himself on his big crowds uh, and he can't do anything at the moment. And I think that's what's got the potential uh, to hurt him. Having said that, look at his loyal supporter base uh, yeah. out here at Maryland outside the hospital. I don't think this, uh, for those sorts of supporters, I don't think this diagnosis impacts them or how they feel about the president one bit. Lexi, thank you Go so on, much. Lexi. Great report, and uh, we're just guys. I'm glued over your shoulder at the chaos behind you, Lexi. It's just uh, quite amazing what is going on behind Lexi Dace at the moment. We'll get hey, and, and Lexi, just before you go, I know you're at the front of the Maryland Hospital that the, the leader of the free world has got COVID-19. It's a big thing, but I understand you're watching the AFL app and uh, enjoying Collingwood's victory over the West Coast Eagles. Well done. 
Oh, look, the day I can go back to the G and watch the Pies play will be a great day. <laughs> Same. Get, get, get <laughs> out of as quickly as you can. Thanks to Alexis Dace joining us outside the hospital where Donald Trump is uh, currently residing. <laughs> 